Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey Contino here and currently I'm in Cape May Point right in front of St. Peter's by the Sea. Now this may look like an ordinary church. It's got its steeple, got the cross on top, but it has an extraordinary story. For those who don't know, it wasn't built here in Cape May Point. It was built in Philadelphia and brought down piece by piece and rebuilt here. Let's go ahead and talk about the history of this building. I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. And a special thank you out to my Patreons at Patreon.com. You too can support this channel. All you have to do is click the links in the description below. Let's get started. Located at 102 Lake Drive in Cape May Point, this little church has been an icon to the point since, well, before the point was created. Let's start back to 1875, when Philadelphia cotton merchant and devoted Presbyterian Alexander Wilden teamed up with Philadelphian John Wanamaker to build a religious community. Wilden, who owned over 300 acres in the area, which was then called Stills Beach, put 266 of those acres aside to build this town. Together, they founded the Seagrove Association, which would, quote-unquote, build a religious seaside home for the glory of God and the welfare of man. They built the roads, infrastructure, hotels like the Seagrove House, and its churches, but the main feature was its massive wooden pavilion. It was 100 feet in diameter and built in a rustic style. This pavilion was located in the now abandoned circle in the middle of the town. By 1879, the association fell into bankruptcy and parts of the city were sold off for parts. The pavilion was sold and torn down and its wood was reused for houses in the area. After the Seagrove Association went under, they rebranded as Cape May Point. It was around this time when one of the churches down there, the Episcopal Church, was looking for a more permanent home to do their services in. For the year prior, they were meeting in the parlor of the Cape May House. Reverend W.R. Stockton looked everywhere for a building and found one in the summer of 1879. It was a fine yellow pine frame structure, which was built as a kinder care cottage for the Centennial International Expedition. They had built it to teach the Frobo Kindergarten Learning Model, which consisted of creative play, singing and dancing, and nurturing plants. At the expo, this building would have had a fence around it with a garden on the left-hand side. More than 200 buildings were constructed for the grounds, and over the course of three years, the city was selling off these buildings to make some money back. That winter, Stockton purchased the building and took it apart so that it could be loaded on a train and driven all the way down to Cape May Point. Stockton secured the land from the Seagrove Association, and once the pieces were delivered, they were rebuilt and dedicated as St. Peter by the Sea. Due to its design, it was unofficially known as the Gingerbread Church. Where it sits today is not the original plot of land Stockton put it on. Erosion caused the building to need to be moved four separate times. Given its history, in 1995, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in New Jersey. So there you guys go. Now you learn the history behind St. Peter's by the Sea, a.k.a. the Gingerbread Church. Now, did you guys know this? Let me know in the comment section, and I want to thank you for joining me if you haven't done so yet. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joey, and as always, I'll see you on the beach, which is right over here. I'll see you later. Bye.